G'day fellas, Jim Harnwell here from Fishing World magazine. Crossing an ocean bar is a fact of life for a lot of anglers on the east coast of Australia. Uh, it's the only way they can access the open ocean to go fishing for their uh, game fish or sport fish like kingies and snapper. But bars are inherently really dangerous things and you need to know what you're doing before you actually attempt to cross one. Uh, I really don't like crossing bars. I've had a couple of really bad experience with bars up the north coast and they're just not something that I like to do, but unfortunately it's a fact of life and you've got to do it. I'm just going to go out uh, at my local bar here, uh, the Crookhaven uh, River Bar. It's, it's not a bad bar by bar standards. Uh, it's reasonably tame, but it can still get a bit gnarly. And um, what I want to do is just give you the basic sort of tips on what you need to know um, about crossing bars and the sort of things you should think about when you actually go out and, and cross a bar. Um, the first thing you should know is how bars actually work. And what they are is, is uh, they're the opening of a river to the ocean and uh, they're influenced very much by wind and tide. Now, the worst time you can possibly cross a bar is at low tide with wind blowing on it and a swell coming in. It means the water's really shallow, there's big waves and the wind is, is messing everything up. The best time you can cross a bar is at high tide, when there's little or no wind and when there's minimal swell. So if you can time the tides, the time the tides uh, for your arrival and uh, coming back in again, that would be a fantastic way to go. Unfortunately, a lot of the time you can't really uh, you know, say I want to go out at 6 o'clock and it might be a low tide, so you've just got to uh, handle it and, and get out there, otherwise you'd never be able to go fishing. But if you can get a high tide uh, to go out on and a high tide to come back in on, you're laughing because it's usually pretty fine. We're lucky here, the tide's uh, just turning from the full, so it's starting to run back out, but there's plenty of water over this bar. Now there's probably a metre or so of swell and only a, a light onshore breeze. Um, in summertime, uh, when you've got strong northeasterlies flowing and a, and a southerly swell and the tide's boring out of the river, this bar can be quite a nasty, nasty little bar. Um, other things you should realise is that most bars have got uh, things called leads, and they're uh, markers on the shore which sort of give you the angle to come in on or the angle to go out on. You should also always line up your markers and they give you the idea of the best sort of channel to come in on. You should also uh, ring up your local coast guard when you're heading out, just let them know that you're heading out the bar and, and maybe ask them if there's any issues with the bar or they'll be able to tell you if there's a big swell or if it's dangerous. So you need common sense if you're going to go out over a bar. You should wear a life jacket, obviously. In New South Wales, for example, you have to wear a life jacket when you're crossing a bar. You should ensure that your boats and your engines in good working order. You don't want your engine to conk out halfway across a bar and your boat has to be a seaworthy vessel. Obviously the Fishing World Bar Crusher is, is sort of purpose designed for this sort of work, so I'm pretty confident with this boat in going out over, over bars. Uh, you should also stow the gear in your boat so there's nothing loose flapping around everywhere. And uh, you should also check that your bilge pumps are working just in case you take uh, a green one over the front or over the side so you can get rid of that water as quickly as possible. Uh, the other key thing is that if it's dodgy, don't go out. It's not worth, not worth your life going out fishing over a bar that's going to be dangerous. So if the swell's too big, if the conditions are wrong, can it, go fishing for broom up the river. One day, another day it'll be, it'll be fine and much easier to get out. But if you are going to go out, there's a few things you need to uh, be aware of. Um, one is that once you're committed to the crossing, you're committed. You can't change your mind halfway through. So you've got to, you've got to uh, assess the conditions, uh, maybe hang off um, before going out, just check the swell pattern, uh, just keep an eye out for any odd little things that are happening so that you don't get any nasty surprises when you're out there. And the other thing is, don't rush things. Um, a lot of people think you should gun it through a bar. That's a really dangerous thing to do because you can hit a wave going too fast, flip it coming over it, or, or damage your boat, damage yourself. Um, probably the best way to approach a wave if you have to climb over one is to you know, motor forward at a, at a reasonable pace and um, just when you're going to go over the wave maybe give it a little bit of power uh, so, but not enough that you actually get airborne. You don't want to get airborne, that's a bad, it might look fancy in pictures and things like that but it's a really bad thing to do when you're out on the water. Just keep a, a nice steady forward pace and you should be able to punch through 
most waves. If you're in a position where you can actually, uh, you know, some barns have got a, a sort of a situation in the middle where it's, you know, not, not too turbulent, you can sit there and wait. Um, and, and sometimes if it's, if it's looking too dicey, you can actually turn around and zoom back in again, get out of trouble that way. But most of the time, once you're, once you're uh, crossing a bar, you're committed and you've got to do the, you've got to go the whole hog. It's important that you uh, judge where the waves are breaking and keep away from them. Uh, a lot of bars have got channels that run through them and you should stick to the channel that's the deepest water and that's where you want to be. Over there it's quite shallow, there's a rocky reef, so I don't want to go too close to that. Out here where I am now, you know, it's about three fathoms and that's plenty deep for what, what I'm going through here. As I turn, turn around this little point here, we sort of head uh, southeast a little bit and she picks up a little bit more, but it's quite safe here. You can see the waves are breaking over there, but where we are on the shoulder of the waves, quite uh, good. We're coming up on a bit of a wave here. Like I say, just power over it gently. Don't smash yourself through it. All you're going to do is wreck your boat, possibly wreck yourself. Can you get a bit turbulent out here? That's just part of the go. Once you're through the, the roughish stuff, it usually calms down quite quickly. Now, once you're through the main action of the bar, you can breathe a sigh of relief. You're over the bar and you're in deep water. This has gone down about four fathoms now and uh, I'm out of whatever trouble might have been back there. So now, you know, go fishing, do whatever you like. You've made it through the bar. Okay, when it's time to come back in from your day's fishing, back through the bar, Again, you need to put your life jacket on, you need to make sure everything's stowed away, and it's a good idea just to uh, sit outside the bar and just check that everything's looking okay. Remember, the tide will have changed from when you went out, so it's either gone out more or it's come back in again, so the bar will have changed considerably since, since when you went out before. Again, you need to line up your marks, your leads, they give you the, the direction you need to go back in. And when you're coming back in through a bar, what you want to do is actually wait for a wave to come through and then follow that wave in. So that wave actually puts water over the bar and that gives you a safe passage through. So just want to hang out outside the bar, check out the swells that are coming in, wait for a nice one to come through and then follow it in. Now you don't want to let that wave uh, overtake you or you don't want to overtake it. Here's a nice one coming through here now. Go in with him. See here, I'm, I'm chasing the wave. Like I said, coming back in is usually a lot easier than going out. So that wave's taken me all the way back in through the bar. Lined up my leads. Okay, so we made it back in, no problems. Followed that wave all the way through. Uh, lined up the marks, got into the channel. No dramas. Had a good day out fishing. All good.